What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'm here to talk about the Fuji X-E4. We're going to do a little review, we're going to do it in two parts. Today's part is POV and we are going to jump straight into the action. Right then guys, let's jump into the action. As you can see, first of all, I want to talk about how bloody beautiful this camera is. It's just so cool. Now for these photos, okay, let me start again. When I got this camera, the idea of buying it was as like an everyday carry, put it in my pocket and basically just use it for Instagram stories, use it for work purposes, uh, BTS and stuff of my own work, nothing specific. But honestly, this camera is so much better than I thought it was going to be. I really, I can't believe how good it is. Now I'm not going to go through in massive depth why I'm taking each photo. Some of these photos are good, some of these photos are a bit average. We'll call this one an average one. But for run and gun, I just want to kind of emphasize how good it is because this camera is tiny. It's really tiny. Say hi to John, everyone. Follow him on Instagram. Link in the description. Sorry, we're back to uh, Fuji. So yeah, basically this camera, it kind of it kind of blows my mind, actually, if I'm honest with you. I bought this camera, like I said, to kind of as a run and gun. I bought it with a 28 mil lens which is the equivalent of a 40 full frame and i kind of thought well i can use that for stories take the odd photo here and there if i just kind of going out and about but honestly i loved it so much it took such clean photos i was like right i'm gonna buy 33 1.4 lens which is what i'm using here and it's it's so good this lens is amazing it's so fast the camera is brilliant i know that autofocus in these sorts of cameras are never going to be like unbelievable but i can't tell you how good this is i can i'm a bit run and gun when i shoot so as you can tell from these clips these are all taken pretty much within the first like five minutes of having the camera out um Brighton's interesting, like it's quite tight, there's lots going on, so you can kind of do that, which is why I've come to Brighton to take these photos. But as you can see, these photos are really cool. Now, I haven't done before and afters on them. I'm shooting these in RAW and JPEG. So the reason for shooting them in JPEG is because I want to basically, if the, I've, I've set up a recipe to essentially um, put them straight onto my phone if needs be and post them for stories or whatever. Uh, but I'm also shooting them in RAW so they can then match the photos that I take on my Canon. Um, as you can see from these photos, they are so sharp, so clean. Like I'm not really doing much here. I'm not doing anything special. These are just fairly generic photos to kind of test the camera out. Um, you know, I've got it set up how I like it, very similar to how I've got my Canon R6 II set up for street. And honestly, I I would very happily put my Canon R6 II down, never use it ever again for street photography, because this thing is good enough to, to cope with pretty much whatever I need. Now, in the second video that I'm going to do, it's a bit more in depth. So we're gonna talk about the sensor, how it compares to the other cameras on the market um, by Fuji. Uh, this is quite a funny photo, as you'll see in a second. John poking his head through this little, well, I mean, Brighton is a quirky place. And uh, I would say that sums up Brighton quite nicely. Um, sorry. Back to the camera. So uh, the the next review, so this is part one, right? Part two, we will do a bit more in depth. We'll be looking at why this camera is so good and why you it is a really strong option for you. So we'll compare it to the Fuji uh, 100V, X100V, I think it is, the, that's the right camera. I remember, I'll, I'll, get, the, I'll get it all right for the technical stuff. Um, and why I think this camera is better. And there's a few reasons. First of all, it's about 500 quid cheaper and it's got the same sensor in it. So all you're getting, well, we'll I'll go into that next week. I don't want to like ruin the surprise, you know, I don't want to ruin it. Um, so yeah, continuing, we're going around the photos. Not, these aren't actually shot at 1.4 aperture. These would be shot much higher than that. Probably somewhere like, somewhere between 2.8 and 
3.5, somewhere in that region, that's generally where I'll stick to. Uh, having the 1.4 as an option is just absolutely superb, so I'd highly recommend getting this lens. I'm actually waiting on the post today to get a 28mm lens. Um, I'm about to go to New York and I wanted to get a 28mm lens so I could have it in my pocket because it's a pancake lens. It's two aperture, which is, suits me down to the ground. I can work with that in pretty much any conditions going. Uh, the lens is not cheap. I just picked it up secondhand in like apparently mint condition. Well, that remains to be seen. But that will, that that basically gives me then, it's a 17 mil pancake lens, works out at the equivalent of, is it 18 mil? Yeah, I think it's 18 mil, the equivalent of a, of, a, of a 27 mil lens, which is similar to what you'd have on an iPhone or, you know, your, whatever phone you use. Generally speaking, they're around 28 um, mil lens. So it's sort of focal length. As you can see with Brighton, it's quite an interesting place to shoot, which is why I kind of ran this test here. I live quite close to Brighton, so I'm between Brighton and London. It's easy for me, easier for me to come to Brighton. So, but it's quite quirky, Brighton. There's lots of things we can do here. There's lots of tight roads. There's these cool bus stops and and telephone boxes and stuff. It's very similar to, um, you know, London in that regard. Um, it's not quite as like clean to shoot in as London. Like London is a little bit nicer, I would say personally, but it, it, there are, it is quirky, Brighton. So it's a good place to shoot. If you ever down this way, definitely street photography wise, it is superb and it's totally different to London in the regard that you get much more quirky people. I mean, it's a bit like shooting in Shoreditch, I suppose. Um, but anyway, back to the back to the um, XE4. So. As I sort of touched on before, the, one of the reasons why I bought this camera is for an everyday carry. As you can see, it's very small. Now the idea was to use it with a pancake lens because I could essentially put it in my pocket, especially in the winter when I've got a big jacket on, it goes in my pocket um, when I'm out and about and I'm not necessarily shooting specifically. Say if I'm on a day out with a friend or whatever and, I'm, and I don't need my big camera, I can just put this in my pocket. That's why I bought it. Um, but it's so good that I've been coming out and just using it just to lighten the load. Because, I don't know, if you guys are used to going out and shooting, carrying all your stuff around all day, every day is, is quite painful. Um, somehow I've been talking here for seven minutes, waffling on. If you know me, I can talk for England. I don't know if it's a gift or a curse. You can sort of be the judge of that. That's a cool photo. I like that one. There's a few cool photos in here. If you like any of the photos, let me know in the comments. Um, I'd appreciate that. But yeah, so this thing is like sleek. So I've got the all black version. I tend to wear black clothes. It kind of makes me a little bit more subtle because I like to get quite close to people if I can. Um, yeah, so for me, this was... There was lots of options. I did do my research. I, I was looking at the Ricoh GR3X 40mm lens, um, but you're stuck with a fixed lens similar to the uh, X100V. So this one, you can actually change the lens, which for me is massive because I would be comfortable when I've got my 28mm lens coming through, I would be comfortable going, or the 28mm equivalent, 27mm equivalent. I'd be happy just going out with the 50mm and the 27 equivalents. That to me, I could, I could do so much with that. That's the camera. This is the photographer. I hope you enjoyed that little POV video. Like I said before, this camera is brilliant. That was just phase one. Phase two, we're gonna go into more detail. As I said, I'm gonna look at the video aspects because it doesn't have stabilization in it, which is the one big drawback for me. But you can get around it. You can definitely get around it. And I'm gonna try and prove that in the next video. So we're gonna look at video capabilities of the camera. We're gonna look at the pixels. We're gonna look at the sensor. We're gonna go a bit more in depth. So if that's your thing, make sure you're subscribed. If you did enjoy the video, hit that like button. Let me know in the comments if anything you wanna talk about, I will reply to all of them. Um, I think that about sums it up. Wanted to keep this one nice and short and simple. Any questions, like I say, hit me in the comments and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.